was the very, very first offence that you did? Do you remember? Huh? I think it's the car, bar. Yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't the car. Okay, so this one that happened where you stole money, just 心情很不好, that's all. What happened that led you to steal money? I think work problem. I don't want her to Then I cannot be able to beat her. So I just took it. Lor. I never even spend it. I just hide it under the things. And then she was on the what made you so angry that you wanted to take revenge on her in this way? I just don't like the way she asked me to do something. Okay, for this, let me go through it first. Um, so you have one, two, three, four, five charges proceeded. I'm here for interview. This is my first time meeting my probation officer. And then one, two, three, four, five, and another five TIC la. You know what that means? Ah? Take into consideration. Okay. She was referred by the court. This stage is where we assess whether they are suitable for probation. Uh, I have three to four weeks to investigate how did the offences come about, uh, what was the motivation behind her committing the offences, and get to know a bit more about her thoughts behind committing the offences. Without that in-depth kind of understanding, we cannot deal with the root of the offending behaviour. That kind of insights will help us to know in interventions what do we need to target. Stealing of the car and driving without licence, in that sense, there are really three charges. One is driving under age, one is driving without insurance. One is driving without consent. Yes. Yeah, the next one was scam, cheated $1,000, cheated $500, cheated $1,000. Mm. The money that you got was used for your personal expenses and no restitution was made. Mm. I read a lot, eh? are you following? Hoping that I will successfully get sentenced with probation because I wouldn't want to be like in RTC. No freedom at all. Like everywhere you walk, there's locked doors. You have to be on handcuffs. You don't have like a decent bed. You can't sleep in a proper like place. Uh, morning, Mr. Das. I need to discuss a case uh, to recommend for commendation in court. When she first started on probation, she was actually uh, residing in Boston. to abide by all the hostel rules and she's currently working as some process worker which she often has to work in the sun and all but her conduct is exemplary so I'm thinking she's deserving of a commendation in court next month. I've looked at the report and I think uh, uh, it is okay for us to go to the court to ask the court to comment her progress yes. but we need to look at longer term linkages for her with the community and to make sure that uh, even when she faces setbacks and all that she doesn't relapse. feeling today? Okay, good. Good ah? And nervous. Why nervous? Because like, need to mm. talk to the judge. But you know that it is for a good reason today, right? Yeah. People see your good progress, don't need to worry. You go inside there and wait. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Well, not everybody gets commended in court, but if, let's say, the progress has been good, we do feel that they're deserving of it and they should be recognised for the efforts that they've put in. More often than not, she meets with people who are not too happy with her. So she should also know that when she performs well, when she progresses well, when she puts in effort, she should be affirmed. We will want to speak up for them. I only can count with my one hand how many like, good things I've done in the past, like as in when I was small. I don't really recall much of it. Lah.
orang yang nak stay with my ni so they don't really see the good things I've done and then when I leave my parents they not really satisfied with what I do I don't even know what to do with my life I don't set any goals I don't plan anything just live a day per day lah I just feel like give up my parents they took drugs since I was 1 years old lah after that in and out of prison they stopped One fine day, my mom was talking to me. But when she talked to me, is that like she is fidgeting? I didn't know they were on drugs, so I just want to try, just like out of curiosity. <laughs> that is where I started to get hooked on it. Then get a nap. I was yeah eight months. Pregnant and I got caught. They bring me to hospital dulu. Test whether I positive or not. Then the court said that I am sentenced to probation. They put me into this hostel. Yeah, my child is under foster care under MSA. Pasal the lelaki tak tanggungjawab. Kan? Then they found a suitable foster parents to take care. She has faced multiple challenges in her life, definitely having to fend for herself when her parents are not around for her. I don't really see them in my life. Ah, from small, they take me once in a while. Sometimes my mom, when she say that we are your parents, you know that kind of thing. Then I'm like, yeah, you both are my parents, but where have you been for the past years of my life, of my growing up stage? Where have you been all this while? I think drugs is one of the most difficult to stop lah, because I've seen a lot of people relapse. For example, my parents. At the beginning, when probation just commenced, of course I do have my doubts as to whether she will be able to abide. But at that time, I saw potential in her, so of course um, I'm happy to see how she has progressed. It's also a motivating factor to highlight to them their positive consequences when they behave responsibly, and this might motivate her to move on and do even better in life. It's a new experience for me. I am trying to like calm myself down. It's progress, so I don't really know how to feel about it. This is where I am now. I'm proud of myself, yeah. And people are acknowledging it. It's a good feeling. I didn't really get to talk to you very much. We only just went through your charge sheets and your statement of facts. With every investigation case, I take on a more curious stance and try and understand the person for whom he or she is. Right now, it's just information gathering. Actually, first thing today, right? I wanted to find out a bit more about each of your offenses and what happened. Why some of you commit such an offense, lah? Okay, this incident about um, stealing and driving car, I think it's quite a 大胆的事情啦 You know, if you don't know how to drive, then you decide to drive somewhat at night, drive out into the road. What were you thinking at that time? Ah, 没有想这么多的，就是要去找我朋友了。Okay. At that point, why do you feel so eager to go and meet a friend, such that you never even care about your own safety? Cause lonely, ba. Okay, can you give me a while? Ah, uh, the second interview with me today was cut short because we realized that there could have been another offense that she has committed that may be cheating related. Okay, can you give me a while? Ah, uh? uh, the second interview with me today was cut short because we realized that there could have been another offense that she has committed that may be cheating related. I've only seen her for about three interviews. On the whole, we would like to assess what is her pattern of behavior like to make an assessment of what's her personality or what's her her thought process like. How come 
time you will feel that like it's okay to scam people if you have no money. 没有觉得怎样哦。Disorder就是人家骗你骗我，你骗我，你骗我，你骗我，就这样。Oh. Offenders may use distorted sense of thinking to facilitate the offending behavior. Uh, for example, if it's come to stealing, an offender may think that uh, I'm only stealing like ten dollars uh, from the person. Why should I care? It could be their temperament since young that. Uh, I'm more interested in my own needs. I don't care that I'm hurting others. And such anti-social orientation, again, may predispose them to uh, to offend, just to get what they want. I'm not like a heartless person. You still earn some hard money, but make a cent. I did feel bad, but I just don't show it to them because why am I asking for? And I spend my time, I just think that like, I have their money, so I'm just in jail. You are just gonna be there whining and crying. I was mainly looking out for her willingness to share and talk about her offences and her mistakes. An honest conversation, as early as the pre-sentence investigation, is important. If they continue to paint an unrealistic picture or sugarcoat things, it becomes very hard for us to also address deeper issues that are contributing to their offending. Can you share with me about this investment scam, right? Is it how it came about? What was the idea about? Is the lucrative investment scam means you pay someone to invest on something, then I tell you invest in this product that you can get more money. So after that, I just pay them, I just pay them, I just pay them. Like you just deposit five hundred, one thousand, maybe more, you just get more. Maybe five hundred times two, one k times three, two k times four, just like that. After that, no, I just tell you this product died down, no use, market down. Really, got people believe it. Really, got people believe it. 用那个 method 咯，放在 Instagram， 叫人家 invest， then 人家真的 invest 啦。OK， 我就跟人家讲，我会把他我的 IC 做一个 verification， but 没有啦，他们没有问， but 呃，没，他们真的要 IC， 我就想没得。So this August 的这个 incident right 是怎样会 scam 到人？那个男的，然后他放一千，我就跟他讲 OK， 后面他就讲 six hundred more times 多少多少多少 right， 然后我就讲啊呀。Yeah. 我忘记我讲多少了，把是随便讲的啦。Yeah， 我还摸的 ，then block 他们，不要他们一直烦我。Were there any other type of like scam or cheating that you 做 then 没有被抓的？没有了吧，就只有这样。Taxi 耶 ？Taxi 有啊，那个有被抓啊，那还要 pay for it 吧？嗯。Yeah， I actually receive a letter from the comfort. Oh， what did he say？ 还钱，我要他们报警，肯定的。I didn't take it so like too hard lah, cause I thought it was like a small amount. Then when did it happen? Few years ago. Roughly, you were how old? Fifteen, sixteen, or maybe younger. I think cost me a lot of money. Then I went to a location. Can you tell? So you get the cab, so you get the cab, so you already know you want to scam me, lah. Yeah. You how did you tell the taxi driver? I went to pay the money. Just didn't get it. Oh, okay. Papa, just tell me, say just take public transport lah. Take a cab for what? Don't use any money, then don't take cab lah. Why take transport very too long? That's why you tell me. Program. It is a core program for all our probationers who are just based on probation. And we guide them through thinking about the victims, how the victims feel when an offence is committed, and then get them to develop some empathy towards their victims. And when you think of victim impact, what, what comes to your mind? Victim impact? Like what? I don't know. Any idea? Victim and impact got two words. Victim means like the bad people, like something like that. No. When we talk about victim, it always comes with victim or offender. Victim is the one that kena in an offence. Offender is who? The person who commit the crime. Correct. So the difference is this: offender has a choice to do, but the victim oftentimes don't have a choice. The probationer previously committed an offence because they have a deficit in certain skills. They react based on their impulses, and so the core programs are meant to then teach them certain skills to ensure that uh, their risk issues are addressed. And they don't get into trouble again. What were some of the offences that you committed? I steal cigarette. Mm-hmm. And I uh, steal money, steal cigarette. Then I do uh, along. Okay. 
who are the victims and what are the hurts that they experience. Sometimes they may feel that certain offences that they committed or certain actions that they have done is justified because they have their reasons. So we get them to think about other people's perspective yeah, and to consider how other people would feel. The cigarette thing, the victim is uh, cashier. Mm -hmm. The hurt is emotional. Emotional? How come? Because they tell him why I steal a cigarette, he's angry. Oh, OK, you can write that down. Anybody else in that case was the victim? Uh, no, only the case. Only one person would be. Who did the cigarettes belong to? I think the shop. And who owns the shop? The boss. So I just put cashier and boss. Uh. Mm. So what kind of hurts does the boss experience? Um, financial hurt. Uh. You can say secondary hurt. Uh. Hey, no, actually not. If don't have, also can tell me don't have. I think the cashier. Because uh, uh, maybe the boss could leave. Uh. Okay, so when a boss go the cashier, he will feel that he's blamed. Right? Blamed for nothing. Correct. The last type of offence that you did was the Along case. Five times, was it? Uh, six. Six times. So when we think about the Along case that you did last time, who do you think were the victims of that case? The owner of the house. People living in the area. Mm -hmm. Then the family member. We did a lot of thinking today about what happened last time. Do you think about the people that may be affected and what they will go through? See, when I, when I do and everything, uh, I'm quite shocked. Uh, I affect a lot of people. Uh. How are you feeling now? I regret. Uh, what do you regret the most? For doing this, for committing crime. Last year, my friend got pissed about uh, trespass. Then uh, my friend have to pay fine. The mother not in the money. So he asked his friend uh, see if he got any work to do. No. Then his friend recommend do uh, this along thing. Uh. He like very scared to do because he don't have the boss. Lah. So uh, I say to him, I say I do with you. Uh. First house we do was at Pungola. We get 150. The first house when we do really like item, my friend, we stop. Because uh, I don't want to get into trouble because this can get addictive. I can do a lot, a lot of house. Then uh, my friend say, last, uh, last. He say, last also still do. Hello, Ah, this one I remember. This is the small kid who took the mother money. I didn't think it would be so small, 13, 14 only. OK. So how did this case come about? How did you get her money? She Instagram me. She told me she had money, and she gave me money. He's very kind, this one I really feel bad. After he withdrew me the money, he told me how old. Then I sat down, I... I feel very bad out there. I even buy coin for him. Then I, I send him to a camp. Mm -hmm. I ask him if he got money in the Google or not. Then he said he don't have that. I pass him like 10 or 20 dollars. Alright, then you saw, okay, he's a small boy. Why is my mom asking how much Because my best friend doesn't have a share of He said he really need to pay this, pay that. Lor. I will choose my best friend over this problem. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, misguided peer loyalty is one of the reasons why they commit offences. I think it boils down to wanting acceptance from their friends, wanting to feel that they fit into the group, wanting their friends to feel that they support them, and hence perhaps they will do certain things to get their friends' approval and acceptance. You have idea to scam my best friend. The mother or the grandmother. It's either one got tumor, one got cancer. I I Okay. 
So I thought it was a joke until I went to the hospital and I saw his body and he overdosed. I didn't know that he was taking drugs. So the money that I shared with him, I didn't go to where. I went to ask the mother that whether she and the grandmother she got any health problems. They did admit, but there's no money going to like 100% to them. Lah. Me,先來了前你給他,沒有給他全部啦,包,去K parents don't pamper them. You know, my family is like those kids of food on one. Don't need to use branded one. But I see like my surrounding of friends, they carry like those bags, right? You know, Cancun is considered quite expensive. Really, my hundred dollars for one bag. Right? I never ask my parents because I, I know that they surely will say no. Why do you make yourself suffer like that? Didn't you think of the possible consequences? Honestly, there's mm. nothing much to talk about that. Things has already happened. Yes, so I happened. don't want to talk about that. No point pondering on. I see you changed your photograph already. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I see your... Uh, what's that? Photo changer, yeah? Yeah, your boyfriend, ah? Yeah. I'm uh, seeing her today for reporting. I understand that she has a new relationship. I think because she doesn't get good relationship with her family, she turned to her friends. Does he know you're on probation? Yeah. Does he know what the offence was for? Yes. Does he know also that you have a baby? Yes. He's aware of all yeah. this, lah. He's aware of all this. Because, ah, uh, Right from the very start, you know what I feel is the most important to you? What? We actually felt, right, what is most important for you are, uh, is actually this left. I think it still is, uh, not that it isn't. Actually, it's true. It's, it's true, right? I hung on to relationship, like, very tight. So you see, uh, if ever relapse again, uh, it could be that also. In the past, when she was uh, with another partner, yeah, she was on drugs with the partner. So for her, I'm very concerned about the relationship. The person that you are closest to, you're most related to, the relationship is very important. And if that person is on drugs, right, then the relapse might be that. The main aim is to help her understand the relationship, how relationship might impact her, whether this current boyfriend is um, a healthy relationship in that sense. We also do not want her to relapse back into drugs or even other unhealthy habits. But this might also be one thing, right, that will actually keep you away from the drugs. Eh? I'm talking about your daughter. It can actually be your daughter that will keep you away. There are many reasons why people take drugs, you know. So all of us actually feel that it's for those two main reasons. That's why I throw out the two main cards. Lah. So is it uh, something I need to beware of or what? Is it something bad or what? It's just to remind you lah, that you need to be mindful of who you mix around with. Lah. I have survived one whole year and I can survive for another year. Survive for another year without relaxing? Lah. No, lah. Lah. Yeah, lah. Lah. My main concern is that you will relax. Lah. I have seen you come very far. It's been one year. Mm -hmm. And probation not easy. I yeah. know. Really, lah, you came this far already. Honestly, I, I don't think you need to fall back. Lah. Your daughter is waiting for you. Lah. Yeah, I know. Largely, the vast majority don't complete their order because of persistent violations in their probation conditions. And that is despite the warnings or court warnings, uh, written warnings, uh, added conditions on probation. <laughs> I wanted to discuss about one of my clients. Um, he's currently in hostel, but recently we found out that he's been forging his movement books when he's going to school. Uh, so instead of letting the teacher sign, he's been signing out himself and giving himself a bit of extra time. So 
there's actually been four counts of forgery in the movement book. He's received warnings after warnings for uh, breaches of time restriction, failing to attend community service, failing to report to me, uh, failing to attend school as well. On the whole scheme of things, throughout his probation, he doesn't seem to be doing very well. He's still unable to comply with the conditions that have been set out for him. He's been through quite a long while on probation already, more than a year. So he should be very familiar with the rules and the expectations of him. Now. So I'm also concerned about whether he's still motivated to maintain changes, to change his behaviour. Every time that he breached um, probation conditions, it was really I think it stems from his uh, need for relatedness. So right now, also getting in trouble will be accepted by a girlfriend to, to solve his uh, relationship issues. So he wanted more time to, to discuss things with her before he returns back to hostel. How we help him to navigate that? So far, my sessions with him have always revolved around peer refusal skills, decision-making skills. In risky situations when he feels like he's about to lose this person, that's when he would, he would still jump uh, and take a take the risk. Whatever I do was actually to help her lah. Because she got some problems lah. I can't really think about the consequences I just do lah for the sake of her. I do theft and trespassing. So I got three counts for theft. Then one count of trespassing. I get into that habit because of my friends teach me how to steal. But I didn't know at that point of time it was an offence. We actually plan want to cook. So we come up with this idea to actually steal the portable stove cooker. Put the portable stove cooker inside the bag, then I just went out like that. Sometimes like when I go inside a shop, right, the mind will trigger myself, like telling me, okay, steal. If like I got money, but I feel like I want to steal, I steal. I know that stealing was wrong, but to the point where I find it like it was making myself happy. Uh. Although it's a crime now. Then he also asked me to go and check. I keep saying, later, later, wait for my pay, then I buy the pregnancy test too. Then it showed two lines down, like, because in, in my head, it's wrong. It's wrong to get pregnant. What is going to happen next? What was the thing that you worry about? Because I thought it was a, oh, breaking dog. the law. That day after I meet my daughter, I think I want to give up for adoption. I don't know, like, I cannot think straight. You know, inside the bus, I was crying. I was like, everything is like on my shoulder. Like, I can feel it all at once. Let me turn you back to one, two months ago. At that time, why go and have sex? It was fun. It was pleasure. What about protection then? No, we didn't use any. Obviously. Yeah. I'm saying, how come? I have no answer to that. Did he say anything at that time? He only said that if I were to get pregnant, uh -huh. he would take care of me and the baby. Okay, fine. So your concern was more of if you get pregnant, is there someone there to support? Correct? Yeah, something like that. Sounds like you have some plans, <clears throat> but why do you make yourself, in inverted commas, suffer like that? Didn't you think of the possible consequences when you thought having sex was fun? Honestly, there's mm. nothing much to talk about that. Things have already happened. Yes, so Things I happen. don't want to talk about that. It's mm. already happened, just move forward with it. No point pondering on, OK, I should have done this, I should have thought about this. So even if we don't talk about that particular incident, we need to also think, I'm talking about consequences now. It's not against the law to get pregnant. But you need to always remind yourself that there are consequences to every action. We usually do not want to impose our values, you know, on our probationers. So what we normally do, we guide them along. You heard what she said just now, you know, it has happened. So we let them look at the bigger picture. How has your two weeks been? Hi. What you do at night? <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but notice what you have over here. Is it a cut? Or is it some pen ink? Hopefully it goes away, yeah. It's a very weird spot to have a mark. No, y'all didn't notice, ah? Uh? I didn't. I, it, it, this is not the first time. He likes to... Um... <laughs> Yo, yeah, but we know it's not that because the father said you do that, he's going to disown him. Mm. Yeah, because it's not allowed in our religion. You know, like, uh, youngsters now these days. Uh, uh. 
I think I playing game and then like I then bought. You see that I shape my eyebrow, or I draw my eyebrow. Yeah. I want to show like face like that. Last time also I got do because like uh, I mix a lot with people with the what people call it tiam, if I'm not wrong. People call it a fighter. You look serious uh, so that people will be scared of me. Uh. Nobody can like uh, touch me. Uh. He knows he cannot do the actual thing, so I don't know what he do. Like. This is not the first time. Warning has been given, but sometimes he can get stubborn. Mm -mm. Good that you observe, because that, that's what I'm keeping late at night. I mean, everybody's asleep. You know, he likes to think something out of the box. La. That's the reason why, uh, as much as possible, I want his time to be fulfilled, you see? Mm. So, oh, to, yeah. To actually distract from all this. To be frank, I didn't expect that it would happen to me. It took me a while to actually digest. I, I'm sorry if my facts are wrong, uh, but based on empirical observation, you know, they come from broken families, they come from uh, parents who divorce, you know. I really almost thought that, you know, it wouldn't happen to me because I can say our family, we are all attached. I think I come from a family which is not so broken. Uh, I don't know why it's so broken. Uh. Last time we made a lot of effort, a lot of attempt getting to know him, but to just dish away, you know? My family also not that understanding. When I get angry, I just do stupid stuff. Uh. My father got say to me, uh, if I start stealing at home, then uh, when I go outside, I start stealing also. Uh, which is true, because uh, it's a habit. Because uh. once you keep on doing it, you get addicted to it. Uh. Where do I go wrong in my parenting skill? Maybe there are some areas I lack off. Yeah, maybe there are some areas that I could be better. I do reflect, I do reflect. I always think that he always idolizes his friends. All his friends. I cannot say a single negative thing about a friend. My friends have been in association. Uh. Last time when I still like not matured, uh, when I see my friends, it's like, say, cool like that. Because uh. like, they give you a lot of things. Uh. Loyalty, then uh, brotherhood, then protection. Because when you're small, people it's easily target. I was bullied once at least sitting in uh, primary school. Uh. That time also, like, I don't know how to fight. I also need people to protect me. Uh. Because um, a lot of people think like I'm very easy to bully. Like that, uh. So I just want them to respect me. Uh. His circle of friends, it makes me uncomfortable. A lot of vulgarities, you know, when he speaks. I can say he's a bit rambunctious, quick tempered. He speaks like a, a gangster, you know. These are signs of imitating what he sees from his friends. I wanted to be there for friends. But then, but then I end up uh, being like them. Uh, they start asking me to do bad stuff. They also do la. Uh, peer pressure. Uh. I saw from the group chat, you know, the video that was sent. <laughs> I was quite concerned, la, right? We had a reporting video call. <laughs> the group chat, you know, the video that was sent. I was quite concerned, la, right? We had a reporting video call. I'm looking at comparison in age, you know. To him, he's just joking, but the strength that he's having, it's brutal. I cannot bring myself to finish the video. And it's not the first time, mm. you know. How do you know that you're angry and it's too much? They were annoying, eh? Correct. So, when you're angry, how does your body feel like? Hot. Uh. Hot? Okay, good. What else do you notice about your body? No, I start to uh, strengthen my body. Uh. If, let's say, you know, anger or stress is not managed properly, um, it can allow the young person to be at a very uh, risky situation. It may cause them to not cope very well, and from there, uh, perhaps make some mistakes. We talked about setting boundaries just now, right? So when you feel hot, what can you do? You can go inside my room, then try not. There is also another thing, uh, but that one is a little bit more difficult, right? Yeah, that one requires a bit more effort. The butt, what was it? You try to help me remember first? It's about the one you change negativity to positivity. Correct. So, it looks like this. So a lot of times, when a situation happens, we feel that, okay, when this thing happens, I must react this way. 
automatic. I can't help it. Yeah. Right? When there's a situation, something triggers me, I will react this way. I get angry, my body is tense. Now. But often what we fail to recognise is when a situation happens, there are thoughts before our reaction. And usually it is unhelpful or helpful thoughts. So when we talk about unhelpful thoughts, when you're thinking negatively, you're very upset, ask yourself the but. But what? But, and then you will start to think the other way. So let's do a quick recap. <laughs> what are the two things we talked about this week? Set boundaries. Mm. And then special keyword is but. The reason why we need to set boundaries is so that everybody at home feels safe, mm -hmm. feel respected, and there is no violence. Sometimes we were thinking, did we discipline him enough? Because I have three boys, right? If we are bad in disciplining, all my three children would, would fail, you know, to respect. Like they say, spare the rod, spoil the child. I did not spare the rod. It doesn't work. It works for me during my teenage years, but it doesn't work for kids nowadays. He's different, very different. He likes to answer you back. I think if looks can kill, will kill you lah. Very defiant. When he spends his time the whole day outside, I already had this gut feeling that he is going to get into trouble. But I don't give up lah. As a mother, I cannot oh, this not gone case. No, I would never want to do that. One point of time, one of my helper was telling me. He told the helper, "B, kenapa kena dengan saya? Karena saya pun tak tahu kenapa saya perangai macam gini." So that's where I book an appointment to see the counselor. He said, "Have you thought uh, of bringing your son to IMH? He needs help. That's why sometimes he cannot communicate with you, cannot explain to you, you cannot express well." So yeah, we book an appointment. I have to do a literacy test. He has to do a computer test to confirm the condition. So it's 50 percent. So it's a moderate ADHD. And the doctor mentioned that he's also ODD. Then the doctor decided to prescribe him medication to calm him down. Both of us broke down. We punish him for not knowing the condition that he had. We punish him because he's not able to express himself. Oppositional uh, defiant disorder can have early onset in childhood too. And such children uh, may demonstrate um, uh, irritable kind of mood. Uh, they usually can be spiteful and also they demonstrate that kind of defiant behaviour towards authority. So these uh, children are more likely unable to take instructions from adults. And when adults are trying to give instruction, they will react negatively. So uh, such uh, disorders can result in them seeking uh, risky uh, behaviour uh, to get that kind of thrill. And because they don't really think through their actions and they can't think through the consequences, it kind of predispose them to act out in an antisocial uh, manner. So this is the medicine that the doctor gives me for my ADHD. Ah. Normally in the morning, I have to take so that I can focus in school. Ah. I won't get distracted or like very rowdy at times. Ah. Because uh, sometimes I cannot control myself where I'm at a bad situation. Very hard for me to think ah, because my thinking process is quite slow. Ah. I feel I must do something. Ah. It's either I want to do something good or bad. Ah. To me, ah, uh, doing something bad is like, quite fun. Ah. The feeling is just fun. I never think about the consequences. Ah. I want to express my feelings, but then like, I don't get the chance to talk. Because later when they saw me, then they say I talk back. I don't know uh, how I want them to understand uh, why I do this. Thank you for coming on time. Okay, no problem. The last conversation we had is going to be very different from today's conversation. Mm -mm. Why is that so? I mean, because like, I did something wrong. Uh, and I breached my TR. Can you tell me a bit more? When did you breach your TR? On Friday morning, like at 5.40. Uh, I left my house earlier. Uh, then after that, I go to Bedok. Who is at Bedok? Who did you meet at Bedok? My girlfriend. We've had this conversation so many times. And what were you supposed to do? And what did you not do? I keep telling myself that I won't breach the R. I won't breach the R, but I breached the R. I didn't like uh, fulfill what I promised. Uh. So it started from this one poor choice and it led to another infringement? Yes, forgery. So as you were forging, you already were thinking uh, of the consequences? After 
So one thing's for sure, we are going back to court. I know in your head that sounds like you're going to lose the relationship if you prioritise probation. So how can you have both? It's really I cannot choose. Uh. Actually, I'm not asking you to choose, no. I'm asking you, how can you handle both? You have to handle both. Let's say in the future you have a job and then you also have a household. If you have a job and you have a wife, do you forget about your wife and then you just go to work? No, I mean like, must have balance. Lah. You have always been prioritising friends and that keeps getting you into trouble. So it's like, thing that I change, lah. like reverse. Lah. Instead of friends, now I prioritise your friend more. Which is the same thing, right? You're prioritising your relationships over your own responsibilities. This is a very self-sabotaging behaviour. People have the misconception that, you know, we are just there to supervise, check on their time restriction, school, school, school. But a large part of it is going through intervention plans, running the programs, making sure they understand. Today, I had a family session. Uh, this is something that we do once a week at the start of probation. Lah. So because for this point, he's pretty new. I think one thing that we value uh, is family involvement. If, let's say, the family is supportive, uh, the boy will also make positive changes. I was thinking about what we talked about last week. There was a little bit of tension, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm glad that we can all laugh about it now. <laughs> <laughs> they had difficulties understanding each other. So the boy, because he, he does have uh, a condition, so he can't express himself so well. And then parents, on the other hand, we try very hard to understand him. You gave good news to your father, but then the way he responded disappointed you. So I wanted to teach them a way to, one, for the boy to express properly, and then secondly, for parents to be able to cater to what he need. Perhaps you can try to say in a way that I feel, da-da-da, I need what I need. Perhaps one thing that can be useful for everybody else in the family to respond is this. Let me know if you need help. Or let me know when you need me. What do you think about this? Yeah, okay. Better, ah? Well, I think uh, we, we apologise also as parents, right? Because we are too concerned, too overprotective. We just want to know if what is going on with you, you know? Is there anything you need? So I think maybe we can uh, chong. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and, and that's only natural. But we want to ensure that during this probation period, he is being well taken care that we always be there for mm, him no yeah. matter what. You make it clear to us, he needs that space. Yeah. I think we, we can learn and um, moving forward, yeah. we give him the space yeah. that he wants. Every one of us believes that uh, any given situation, for example, if there are tension in the family, mm. uh, we will do our very best to actually resolve it. Happy but not happy. <laughs> Why? Eh? Happy is cause probation. Lah. Not happy is cause 24 months. I need to wear tagging. You don't feel that neither case is serious? Ah? Serious is serious, lor. but parents be so serious and friends are so good. So, you still have to do Can do it. Lah. Of course, cannot. Do you have any concerns or worries about wearing no, a tag? No. What are you talking about? I'm not sure. 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 What, what do you feel you still need to change? Yeah, attitude. It's very easy to urge. The greed. Lo. The temptation, la, the greed. I mean, everybody greeds. But it's just how they deal with it. You know. Probation is a punishment, but it's also a chance for you to change and improve on the areas that you feel you still need to improve. Lah. Although, yes, you got restrictions, you got rules, and that is the punishment aspect, but then it's also a time for you to think about you know, the mistakes that you did last time and then how to avoid doing it again in the future. Mm. During our reporting sessions or during the programs that you attend, right, these are things that will help you to manage that temptation. We 
tell me like if I do another breach action, then I tell my probation will be revoked. Then I tell I go to RTC school. The judge has the right to revoke your probation if he does not think that you are fit to continue. So in the end, he gave you a court warning. I had enough already. Ah. From the start, I actually don't know how to look up to people. Lah. If I got a problem, like how do I want to look up to people? Like how? Now I just realize lah, like what I can do, what I cannot do. Not just because of my case, lah, but also like be mature of my decision making. Uh, I want to tell you, my three months is going to end soon, so I'll be a permanent staff. Great, you like the place there, I know. Oh yeah, you're right. Honestly, I feel that the job is helping you to move on very well. So you're very blessed, lah. The place mm -hmm. that you're working at, people yeah. really love you. People yes, really yes, take yes, good care correct. of you. I've been behaving well because I've come so far, so I don't want to jeopardize the things that I already built over the past one year. My goal is also to apply a rented HDB flat so that I can settle down yeah, and start a new family. My focus on my daughter and then my upcoming pregnancy. Finally, this is like a concrete plan, I can say. My children can have a proper home. Lah. Just now, before everybody came in, right, shared with me a piece of good news. Yeah, so I uh, apply for peer leader thing. Uh, guide all the incoming small boys. Uh, to welcome the secondary one. Mm. So he should realize that there are leadership qualities in him. Mm. Mm. Um, in the past, he tried to get respect or rather tried to be a leader of a group in a, a bad way with his friends who are more of a negative influence. Uh, whereas now, you know, I can see the change. He wants to use that that leadership and that desire for respect in a more positive positive way. Lah. Did you share the other good news? No, I only managed to share one thing. Yeah, two good news. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want to share the other one? Oh, yeah, I see. I promoted to say four. Mmm, very good. <laughs> it's always constantly talking about the past. That's one thing I cannot take it. I want to be really bad that I can say, hey, last time you used to hit me. Last time you hit me until I bleed. You always ask me to go and kill myself. Last time this, last time this.